And I started to do that and some of the other things that he taught me. And four days before we left, it taught me the power of my mind and how if I understood the mechanics of it and how it all worked, I could create what I wanted in my life. These amazing tools have been around for millenniums. Monks have been using it for thousands of years. You're not the mind, rather your pure awareness moving through different areas of the mind. If you understand the mind, right, it works on pattern, right? Because right now my, man, my mind is shaped like this. And if I want to go to the next version of me, I need to break this, right, that mold, and then heat it up and then remold it again. And that process of breaking in order to reshape it is where I go, this is really difficult, this is painful, I don't really want to do this. And then it needs to reshape again. And then you get comfortable, the mind gets comfortable with being in its new shape, version 2.2. And then to get to 2.3, you need to break that shape again. And that's when you go like, oh, this is difficult, this is crappy. Ah, oh, I think I should stop. And then it needs to remold again. And that's the part of growing, right? And you just realize after a while that every time you move yourself to the next best version of you, you're going to go through that process of everything in your body readjusting. The patterns in your mind need to break and adjust. Your nervous system in the body is comfortable now with how life is currently. But if you want to go to the next version of you, it needs to adjust everything. Your muscles, your body, your nervous system needs to adjust to the next version of this. So he taught me how the mind works. He taught me about the power of affirmation, which we talked about on the previous episode, and how by using affirmation and um, I could create in my mind and shape my mind to attract the things I wanted into my life. But you have to understand, and then you have to have the desire. And that's how he trained me. And now you have that affirmation practice that you can use. Yeah, to have, yes, things. exactly. And you do affirmations a bit different. You have to have three things that you do yeah. that makes them special. Concise choice of pros, uh, positive words, clear visualization and feeling. And feeling being the most important component because feeling is emotion and emotion is energy and energy is magnetic. Tesla had the saying, uh, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. I think Tesla is an amazing human being and I think he was more like a mystic scientist than anything else. And if I were to elaborate on that statement, I would say that everything is made up of energy and that energy is vibrating at a certain frequency. And your job is to match the frequency of what you want. Because that's harmony, right? And the same way that if you want to attract something in your life, you need to understand what that frequency is that you want and then change the energy in your body to match that frequency. And when you do, you attract that. It's like the old radios, right? You, you tune it, it's, the station is 74.5 FM, and if you get to 74.4 FM, you get static and music. 74.6, static and music. 74.5, perfect music. 74.2, the static. And so your goal is to tune your energy to, to match the frequency of what you want. And then that's when that attraction comes. And a lot of people talk about this law of attraction and stuff, but I don't really understand it or explain it properly. And then I think sometimes the New Age world can just get away by saying all kinds of, oh, the law of attraction, you know, do this and do that, and it will attract it into your life. But there's no practical steps or actually understanding the science of how, how these things work. But once you really understand it and put the hard work into it, uh, these amazing tools have been around for Millenniums, monks have been using it for thousands of years. Concise positive words. Concise positive words. Clear visualization. Clear visualization. And uh, corresponding feeling. Right. right. The feeling is emotion. So when I say corresponding feeling, if you want something, you need to match the frequency of what you want. So remember what Tesla said, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Right? Everything is made up of energy, that's vib and that energy is vibrating at a certain frequency. So if I want to be in harmony with you, I need to feel how you feel. And, how does Brian sit and how does he talk and how does he stand? It's same like actors. That's what they do, right? Actors. They, somebody needs to play Cleopatra or King Richard or whatever it may be. They, they try and feel that person, right? Or even James Bond. James Bond has a certain way that he walks and talks. And there's so many people have played James Bond, right? What, six or seven people, however it is. 
but you never go, oh, that doesn't feel like James Bond. They all have that James Bond walk. Because what have they done? They've really moved their awareness into that area of the mind and they started to feel the character, how he sits, how he talks, you know, his, the little things that Bond does, you know, how he adjusts his coat. And, and then, then you forget that that person is playing James Bond. You look at that person and you go, oh, that's Bond. And that's really what it is with affirmation as you're trying to change your energy in your mind to match what it is you want. And when, when those two things are vibrating the same frequency, then you attract it. Think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Pull all the energy in one place, you change the frequency of that energy to the frequency you want, and then you send it back out again. And, and that's something that's never taught. And I always say to people, life is a manifestation of where you invest your energy. Whatever you put energy into will start to manifest in your life. So energy, the best way to look at energy is to look at energy the same way you look at water. So if I took a watering can and I watered a garden bed, would the weeds grow or the flowers grow? Both, right? Yeah. Because water can't tell the difference between the weeds and flowers. Energy is the same way too. Whatever I put energy into will grow. If I put energy into something negative, it will grow. If I put energy into something positive, it will grow. Energy has no ability to discriminate between positive and negative. Whatever I put energy into will grow. So your life is a manifestation of where you put your energy into, where you invest your energy. So the more energy you invest into something, the more it will grow. How do you manage energy? So first step, stop hemorrhaging energy. Second step, conserve it. Third step, accumulate. Take that accumulate energy and you invest it into what you want to grow in your life. You're, you're not the mind, rather, you're pure awareness moving through different areas of the mind. And I define concentration as my ability to keep my awareness on you for an extended period of time until I make a conscious choice to shift it to something else. So most people allow someone or something outside of them to control where their awareness goes. So I'm chatting with you, my phone goes bing, I pick it up, and my awareness gets right there. Another notification comes, my awareness goes there. I see a noise out there, I hear a noise out there, my awareness goes over there. Right. So my ability to keep my awareness on you or something for an extended period of time is my ability to concentrate. So the first step in teaching your children to concentrate is really teaching them about the separation of awareness and the mind. They're not the mind, rather the awareness moving within the mind. And once they understand this, then you define to them what concentration is, which is keeping awareness on one thing at a time. So if you practice distraction all the time, 10 hours a day, what do you become good after six months? Distraction. Anybody practicing anything for 10 hours a day becomes really good at it. And the truth is, when 25 hours in a day, most people sleep, what, seven, eight hours? So you're awake for 16. 16 hours, are they only practicing distraction for seven or eight hours? Probably more like 13 or 14 hours a day of practicing distraction. Imagine if you practice playing the piano 14 hours a day, seven days a week. How good would you be after seven hours, uh, six months? If you look at most people out there, they have mastered the art of distraction. But they don't even know that. That's they the don't thing. even know. You know, concentration is at the very core of all human endeavors and success. So concentration helps us to look within, first of all, be concentrated long enough to identify the positive strengths and the negative weaknesses, build the positive, work to change the negative, and then in order to change the negative, it's going to take time, and we need to stay concentrated long enough to keep working on it, to keep massaging it, you know? So anyone can do anything they want to if they concentrate. You can. Your greatest contribution to humanity is your own self-realization, your own enlightenment. As you uplift yourself, you uplift everyone else around you. Fast forward 50 years from now, or 55 years from now, I can look back on my life on my deathbed and go, what an amazing life, I would not have traded it for anything in the world. And that's the case for being concentrated, so that you can truly enjoy every experience in your life. And be present, and being present means being able to be concentrated. Ultimately, we all want to be happy, right? I think that's a fair statement to say. I say happiness should never be pursued. Don't pursue happiness, but rather pursue a lifestyle where the byproduct of that lifestyle results in happiness. So I spend time with my family, I feel happy. Spend, have a glass of wine with someone I like or love, I feel happy.